welcome again to the Brandy Library TV, the Ambassador Series, Spike McClure. Martin Va, good morning in Gaelic, good to you. It's going to be a lot of Gaelic today. Ishke <laughs> Veha! <laughs> Woo! Oh, go! Spike, good to see thanks you. for being Love here. You. Now, we have those three single malts here. Mm -hmm. What's common and what's different? What we have here are three different single malts from the Diageo Classic Malt Series. Mm -hmm. uh, Lagavulin and Talisker being part of the original six classic malts. Kalila, uh, I call a cousin of the classic malts. It's been around for a long time. It's a very important malt, mm -hmm. and the blending of the Diageo famous blends, particularly Johnny Walker, mm -hmm. that smoky right. note is right. principally now Kalila. Uh, but Kalila also produces a beautiful single malt, which is now available in a 12-year-old expression, a brilliant 18-year-old expression, a gorgeous distiller's edition expression. We'll go into that later. Yes. But it's another one of the peaty single malts from this portfolio. One of the nice things about uh, discovering peat, whenever you taste any more than one together, is to notice the different level of the peat, how the, play the peat plays differently in the 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 flavor and the nose the whole profile of the right, whiskey right, right. and then to discuss why are they different because the, the the starting the raw material is the same isn't it's, it it's all malted barley uh in fact i would i would hazard to say because these are three western scotland distilleries that are part of the same uh, corporate group diageo which manages the acquisition of malt and the malting so port ellen Probably do, could, Port Allen certainly does the malt for Lagavulin and Kalila, mm -hmm. exactly the same place. I'm not sure about Talisker, I'm ashamed to say. Uh, perhaps Port Allen, probably, I don't know, Rose Isle, it's further up. Right. But, but in any case, the, the, they, all of these have their malt prepared or uh, smoked, you know, peated at another location. Right and then taken to the distillery. That's, the that's, same, that's common for most distilleries To the distilleries same now. level, it's about the same? No, 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 no. They do it differently. Lagavulin is much higher. It's mm -hmm. in the 60s. Uh, Kalila is lower. It's uh, 30s. So is uh, Talisker. Mm -hmm. However, when we taste it, that won't necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily be able to guess because of the way they produce the whiskeys. I think, for the purposes of our experiment today, and I do this all the time when I taste whiskey. I don't necessarily go young to oldest. Mm -hmm. I tend to go least peaty to most peaty. Right. Because, you know, when you, use this, when you use peat malt in a still, right after uh, silent season, when you've done a lot of work on the stills and you put in new pipes, etc., the pipes are clean, you can run fresh malt in that still and produce sweet malt for as long as you want. But once you put peaty malt into that still and you start running that through the system, you can put fresh malt in, it will still come out peaty because you put peat into the system. Well, each of us is a little system. And once you put heavy peat in, you're going to pick up, you can pick up Glenkinchy or Rosebank next uh -huh. and taste them. You say, oh, there's a little peat there because it's in your nose, it's on your palate, right, it's right. in your throat. So I tend to go lightest smoke to heaviest smoke. All right. So in this case, we're going to go Talisker first, mm -hmm. which is not the lightest spear on the table. It's big. Right. It's big, but as far as Pete goes, it's the lightest. Khalil will be next because it presents smoke, I think, bigger than Talisker does. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily more heavily peated, but it presents it considerably bigger. And then we'll go to Lagavulin, which is indisputably the Pete King of the table and the the big heavy son of a gun well let's start with the talisker then excellent you are well you know quite a bit about talisker is okay uh for uh, a little gaelic for everybody this morning uh i'm from the isle of sky my family are all skianic people uh grew up with a gaelic speaking granny i mean uh and this was our whiskey in the house because talisker is from the isle of sky and Skianic, Sky people, are very proud of all things that are Sky, and our whiskey, Talisker, is one of the things that we treasure. Uh, it, th there's a feeling among Scots period that Sky people are different. They have a very, very uh, 
a very special feeling or a feeling of specialness about them. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly Talisker, mm -hmm. when I put Talisker into a blind tasting with five or six other whiskeys and just have people come in, and I'll just say the only note is who's Talisker? Everybody can pick out Talisker. Right. It, it is a very, oh. Such, oh. such a rich, fruity, elegant, a bit spicy. Citrusy. Spicy, citrusy, salty. The, the sea is there. A yeah, sea, yeah. A sea presence is going to be there for all of these. Mm. But, but it always throws up, Talisker throws up that beautiful sea character. The smoke is there. The peat is present. It's not, it's not heavy on the nose. It's saving itself for the, for the palate smoke. It's really going to blossom there. So Talisker is still the only one on the Isle of Skye. Only whiskey produced on the Isle of Skye. Now, you will see Pashku, a black pot, uh -huh. which is also, quote, from the Isle of Skye. But it's not made on the Isle of Skye. Okay. It's blended and bottled on the Isle of Skye. And All then they right. put Skye on the bottle. You'll see Dunvegan, the Skye right, blended right. whiskey. Right. That's from... Clan McLeod, which is my clan, and the clan chief came up with that idea to make money. And once again, that's a blended whiskey that is bottled. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if that's bottled on Sky, it, but it's owned by the family from Sky. Only Talisker makes from grain to bottle, you know, grain to whiskey, right. the, the spirit on Sky. What's special about the, uh, the steel here? Now, Talisker. Uh, Talisker, a couple of things. First thing you'll notice when you go to Talisker, everybody does. I mean, if you just walk around the distillery, you don't even go inside, you say, oh, look, worm tubs. You've got big worm tubs out back. Okay. And as opposed to? As opposed to condensers. For those of you who don't know your worm tub condenser uh, math here, in a condenser, you have a lot of copper tubes and cold water surrounding them in a big thermos arrangement, and you get a lot of copper contact with your spirit, consequently, fruitier, lighter notes, a lighter spirit, period, because you have a lot of copper contact. When you have less copper contact, a worm, which is a big, slowly decreasing in size copper tube that comes right off the line arm of the still, usually is outside in a big cold bath, you'll get a lot less copper contact and you'll tend to get a more sulfurous, heavier mm -hmm. spirit, particularly if you're like Talisker and you run the stills hard without stopping pretty much seven days a week, pretty much 24 hours a day. I mean, they really run the stills hard and you get a lot of copper sulfate on the inside of the still, mm -hmm. which again reduces the activity of the copper on the right. spirit. Right. So you produce a meaty, heavy spirit. Is that why a 10-year-old Talisker is already so rich? It's just so there. It's, all, it's already so much. It's on the still. comes off the still. It's ready to go. Now, if you were to taste it off the still, mm -hmm. you, would, you, would pick, you would say, oh, I don't know if I would drink that. Okay. Because it's, yeah, because a lot, you get a lot of that sulfury, uh, rotten, eggy, uh, what I call a, a, a golf sprinkler water. You know, when you're out on golf courses and the sprinkler's going, well, that's kind of sulfury ground water. You'll get that note in it. You know, in Scotland, you golf a lot. Um, of course, and with whiskey, of course, in your flask. Are we going to taste this or what? We should. Let's do it. Because when you're heading for that, that big beef, for that big meal, mm -hmm. you want to have your, your, your salivary glands going. You want to have your palate really producing, really excited about what's coming. This savory mm. whiskey, savory whiskey, really gets your mouth ready for food. Gives me ideas. Well, so that salty nose that we got here, that fruity, fresh mm. fruit and salt, immediately we get that on the palate. Sweet, immediately, followed quickly by a big, savory, salty. And it's a fruit sweet in the front, salty in the middle, gorgeous, and then pow, a gorgeous little pepper right at the back of the throat, and then the smoke blossoms up into your sinuses in the back, the nasolingual cavity there. It goes swirling up into your head, and you go, wow, that's smoked. More like smoked meat 
mm -hmm. than someone smoking a cigar in the room. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like, it, you get the smoke, but it's not like an area smoke. It's like smoke in the food. For me, it's amazing that you can put, on the nose itself, you can put uh, bacon next to chocolate, next to orange candy, next to sea air. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of everything. It's all There's, there. And the smoke is in the background. Mm -hmm. It hits a bit more when you, when you drink it, mm -hmm. but on the nose, the smoke will not certainly not Especially when you go back now. When you go back now, I was picking up a little smoke when we first smelled it, but now that I've had the smoke in my mouth, when I smell again, I pick up more of the uh, medicinal character, the iodine, the mm. seaweed. Mm. I pick up more, more of the saltiness. I get more briny notes than smoky notes when, my no when I go back, now that I've had it on my palate. It changes. Full Talisker. Mm -hmm. What's available? 10, 18-year-old, The 10, the 18-year-old, the 10-year-old is widely available. The 18-year-old is spottily available. Mm -hmm. It's Whiskey Magazine did a great service for Talisker by making Talisker 18 one of its top picks a couple of years ago. Uh, it did customers a disservice because immediately all of it was bought up off the shelves because it was not highly priced. It was right. put at a very decent price and a lot of people bought it. Mm -hmm. So you have to, if you see a bottle of Talisker 18, immediately buy it. If you come to <laughs> the Brandy Library and Talisker 18 is on the shelf, drink it. Because the next time you come back, it will probably yeah. be gone. Probably I'm gone. not kidding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Talisker 25. Gorgeous. Remember, Talisker ages very well. These big, robust, New makes mm -hmm. do very well in long term, but like 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 red wines, mm -hmm. they have they have a lot of life. Uh, a twenty five, a thirty, oh, which 30. is mag magnificent, and which has been all consumed mm -hmm. here on the library, but I'm sure we'll get more. And a distiller's edition, which is uh, a younger Talisker. It's uh, it's 10 plus a little bit of time. Don't reveal anything here because this, right. is, this is for another segment. Oh, that's right. And well, it's available. And I'll tell you about it. Make later. sure you watch the other segment. The other segment about the Stiller's Edition. Wine cask finished spirits now, from Diageo. The next one is mm -hmm. Kalila. Kalila. How is it different when it comes to distillation? First off, Kalila, the first thing you'll notice is if you walk around the Kalila distillery, the, you, two things, you'll be struck by two things. Now, Talisker is in an incredibly beautiful place on La Carport, this long sea lock with big, black, spiky mountains at the end. I have a picture of Talisker at home, and my son calls it the Lord of the Rings picture because that's what it looks like. Oh, here's Kalila. If you go to Kalila, you'll notice, first off, it's on the west, the east coast of Isla, looking at the Isle of Jura, and these two big, beautiful, old volcanic dome mountains called the Paps of Jura across the Sound of Isla, which in Gaelic is Kalila, the Sound of Isla. Mm -hmm. So the distillery looks out on the Sound, which just rushes by like the East River, flows both ways very fast depending on the tide. The building is what I would call mid-Soviet style modern. Not, not a beautiful building from the outside. Uh -huh. Let's face it, it was built to be functional. Yeah, but come on, when it makes this... And when you go inside, that's another thing. You can go into one of these old distilleries and you're, you, in, a, you're in a dark room. In Kalila, you look out there. Wouldn't you rather work there? Oh yeah. The view is gorgeous. Well, I mean, I love it here is gorgeous. Well, that's okay. You're not going anywhere. You're surrounded by this view, these incredible spirits. <laughs>